Good evening class. We will be continuing with our lecture on the law on sales. We will be discussing chapter 2, capacity to buy or sell. Our source materials for uh, this lecture will be the same. Uh, the book of Villan Reva and Tian Sai as well as the book of De Leon and De Leon Jr. So anyway, uh, remember class, the law does not define who are actually capacitated to uh, enter into contracts. Specifically also, yung uh, persons who are capacitated to buy and sell. Uh, as you have already noticed sa ating uh, uh, obligations and contracts, uh, hindi sinabi doon kung sino talaga yung capacitated persons, but uh, capacity is actually uh, presumed by those, uh, uh, presumed in any person who uh, enters into a contract. What the law defines are persons who are incapacitated. So in, um, in uh, obligations and contracts, we already learned na minors and um, uh, insane or demented persons and also deaf mutes who do not know how to write are uh, incapacitated to enter into contracts. So anyway, the same is true for uh, uh, sales. So capacity to buy and sell. Uh, remember, kailangan nating malaman kung ano yung dalawang klase ng incapacity. Absolute incapacity meaning this person who is absolutely incapacitated cannot enter into any kind of contract. So cannot bind himself in any case. What else? Mm, in case of relative incapacity. Remember, in case of relative incapacity, uh, yung incapacity will depend on the person, depend on the circumstances, and depend on the property. Probably this person is capacitated, actually. Pero uh, with respect to uh, certain property and under certain circumstances, remember, incapacitated na siya. So yun ang relative incapacity. Anyway, um, remember the general rule on capacity. Uh, persons who are authorized to obligate themselves can enter into a contract of sale subject to qualifications or modifications provided by law. So this is the general rule. Basta pwede mong obligahin yung sarili mo, pwede kang pumasok sa contract of sale. But obviously, there are qualifications provided by law. So let us take the rules regarding minors. Minors, insane or demented persons, deaf mutes who do not know how to uh, write. As I have already mentioned a while ago, these are persons who are incapacitated. So generally, no capacity to contract, disqualified from being parties to a sale. Pero wait, kahit disqualified sila from being parties to a sale, remember, contracts which are entered by these persons are not void actually, but merely voidable. So kung pinabayaan mo lang yung uh, voidable contract entered into by uh, these incapacitated persons, they are valid. Kasi nga ang mga voidable contracts, they are valid until they are annulled. Now, um, remember, voidable contracts may be annulled or may be ratified. So if you annul a contract, it cannot be ratified anymore. If you ratify a contract, it cannot be annulled anymore. So anyway, action for annulment will be filed by the person who is incapacitated when he gains capacity. Now, obviously, um, the, the capacitated person cannot uh, file an action for annulment. He is disqualified from alleging the incapacity of the person with whom he uh, contracts. So anyway, itong mga concept na to, hindi rin bago ito. Kung hindi nyo na natatandaan, bumalik kayo sa obligations and contracts. So obviously here, all of our lectures refer to uh, obligations and contracts. Now, uh, bibigyan ko kayo ng tip. Kung hindi nyo naiintindihan yung obligon, bumalik kayo doon. Kasi hindi nyo rin maintindihan yung sales. Hindi nyo rin maintindihan yung partnership. Obligation and contracts, yan ang foundation. So do not waste your time studying sales kung hindi nyo naman naiintindihan yung obligon. Huwag na rin kayong magsayang na mag-RFBT2, mag-aral ng partnership kung hindi nyo naiintindihan yung obligon. Balik muna kayo doon, pag-aralan nyo yun, bago kayo pumunta rito. So anyway, um, remember, uh, voidable lamang ang contract entered into by incapacitated with capacitated persons. Now, uh, also, in the same, uh, uh, regarding the same topic, what about contracts entered into by incapacitated person, persons with other incapacitated persons? Dalawa silang minor, they enter into a contract. Remember, the status of that contract is unenforceable. Now, kung hindi nyo na naman alam kung ano yung unenforceable contract, katulad na sinabi ko sa inyo, balik kayo sa uh, obligations and contracts. Anyway, hindi nyo naman maintindihan to kung hindi nyo naintindihan ang obligon. 
uh, what else? Mm, for necessaries, yan. So necessaries are defined under Article 2, 290 of the um, Civil Code. Uh, everything that is indispensable for sustenance, dwelling, clothing, medical attendance, this uh, in keeping with the social position of the family. It will include also education. So yung education that is uh, um, given uh, to yung uh, minor, um, kasama yun hanggang sa even if he reaches uh, age of majority, hanggat hindi pa niya natatapos yung kanyang uh, profession, yung kanyang uh, course. So, kailangan matapos niya yung uh, course or training for some profession, trade, or vocation, even if it is beyond the age of uh, minority. So, kung nag-aaral pa kayo, tapos lumagpas na kayo ng 18, obligasyon pa rin na pag-aralin kayo ng magulang ninyo hanggang sa kayo ay makatapos. So, remember, necessities, support, yan, necessaries yung mga yan. So, anyway, um, liability for necessaries of minor or other person without capacity to act. So, the rule is, when minors buy, the, gen the contract is generally voidable, as I have said a while ago. Pero pagka ang binibili ng minor ay necessaries, so remember, these are valid contracts. But the minor is required only to pay a reasonable price for the necessaries na binili niya. So, tandaan nyo, generally, minor enters or incapacitated person enters into a contract with capacitated person. The general rule is that it is voidable. Pero kung ang binibili ng minor is yung necessaries, yung kailangan niya para sa uh, sustenance, dwelling, clothing, medical attendance, etc., etc., valid ang contract na to. But remember, minor must pay reasonable price thereof. Uh, therefore, also minor can recover any excess about, above the reasonable value paid by uh, him. So, what else? Um, hmm. What about uh, in case of husband and wife? So, remember these are the rules regarding uh, spouses. So, uh, remember class, husband and wife are relatively incapacitated. Bakit relatively incapacitated? Remember, ang husband can enter into contracts. Obvious yan. Wife can also enter into contracts. Ang husband pwedeng bumili. Ang wife pe pwede ring bumili. Pero remember class, um, when it comes to uh, properties na pag-aari ng um, isang spouse, hindi pwedeng bilhin yan ng kanyang Asawa. So, remember, uh, general rule, husband and wife are prohibited by uh, above article. This article refers to 1490. Actually, hindi ko lang nailagay dyan. So, anyway, in 1490, ayun pala, nandun na banda sa baba. Nakita nyo naman. So, husband and wife are prohibited by uh, article 1490 from selling property to one another. So, a sale between husband and wife uh, in violation of 1490 is inexistent and void from the beginning because this is a contract, this is a sale which is expressly prohibited by uh, law. So remember, pwede silang bumili ng property, husband and wife, pero hindi nila pwedeng bilhin yung property ng asawa nila. That's why they are relatively incapacitated. So itong mga taong to, depende sa property na binibili and depende sa circumstances na binibili yung kanilang incapacity uh, remember the depende sa circumstances na kung nasaan sila uh, yung uh, incapacity ng husband and wife also remember husband and wife are prohibited from making donations to one another uh, during the marriage except moderate gifts uh, on the occasion of any family rejoicing so anyway moderate gift yung moderate yung parang Sakto lang, katamtaman. So anyway, ang moderate, um, depende rin yan sa social status ng uh, mag-asawa. Kung mahirap sila, mahirap pa sa daga, hindi moderate gift yung sasakyan or yung kotse, hindi moderate gift yan. Uh, pagka naman uh, mayaman sila, bibigyan mo ng kotse yung asawa mo, that is a moderate gift. So remember, um, uh, prohibited from donating to one another, prohibited from selling to one another. Why? Because that is provided by uh, law. So anyway, mamaya bibigay natin yung mga reasons for prohibition. 
Uh, but uh, before that, we will discuss first yung uh, exception. So anyway, the first exception is if there is a separation of property agreed upon in the marriage uh, settlement. So um, remember class, uh, yung pangalawa naman, when there has been judicial separation of property decreed between husband and wife by the court, in this case, sale between husband and wife uh, uh, is allowed. They have capacity to buy or sell from one another. So remember, before you get married, I'm sure excited kayong magpakasal. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sure excited kayong magpakasal. Natawa ko sa sinabi ko na yun. Um, before you get married, the, uh, yeah, uh, pagka kinasal kasi kayo class, uh, you will enter into a marriage uh, settlement. So, yung uh, ating, you will enter into a property regime. Yung tatlong property regime natin, I'm sure you have heard of it in your other classes. Yung absolute community of property, yung ACP, conjugal partnership of gains, and yung um, complete separation of property. Yun ang pwede nyong pagpilian. So, kung hindi kayo namili, ang automatic na ibibigay sa inyo ng batas is yung absolute community of property. But it depends kung kailan kayo kinasal. Right now, it is absolute community of property. But before the family code, remember, ang automatic na ibibigay sa inyo kung hindi kayo namili is conjugal partnership of gains. After, nung naging family code na yung ating uh, prevailing law, ang automatic na binibigay na is yung uh, absolute community of property. So, ang tawag talaga dyan, is community property pero tayo kasi ginagamit pa rin natin yung conjugal property pero mali ng term yun unless the parties really entered into a conjugal partnership of gains akala natin basta pag-aari ng mag-asawa laging conjugal ang ginagamit nating term pero dapat community ang tawag doon kasi yun na ang ating default um, property regime parang default setting so anyway, ano man pinakaiba ng tatlo complete separation of property is Complete separation of property. Ang, has, ang property ng husband sa husband lang. Ang property ng wife sa wife lang. That is the best and most ideal property regime which I encourage you to enter into. Now, what about yung absolute community of property? Absolute community of property is um, everything that the husband would be husband and would be wife owns and brings into the marriage is community property. So, lahat ng pag-aari nyo bago kayo kasal at dadarin nyo dun sa brings into the marriage, dadarin nyo dun sa inyong uh, uh, pagsasama, yung sa inyong marriage, is community property. So, kung ang dinala mo is 1 million, yung, yung, yung napangasawa, ang dinala niya ay piso, yun ang community property. So, ano mangyayari dun? Hati kayo dun. Hati kayo dun sa isang million mo, hati kayo dun sa piso niya. Kaya mag-ingat kayo. What else? Um... How about yung pangat, pangat, pangat daw, conjugal partnership of gains? Pwede rin ito. In conjugal partnership of gains, um, kung ano yung properties nyo during the marriage na maipupundar, yun ang property ng conjugal partnership. So, yun ang conjugal property. So, anything na pag-aari nyo bago kayo ikasal, nung single pa kayo, it will continue to be your own property. Pero lahat ng properties that you will acquire after uh, the marriage will become conjugal property. So, pwede rin to, Maganda rin ito. Ang pinakapangit dito is yung absolute community of property. But that is the default marriage uh, settlement. Now, remember, um, pagka absolute community of property, you cannot sell to one another. If conjugal partnership of gains, husband and wife cannot sell to one another. If there is um, complete separation of property, pwedeng magbenta ang mag-asawa sa isa't isa. Ayan ang nakalagay exception. Now also, papano kung ma'am slash sir, ang hindi kami nakapili ng marriage, uh, ay ng property regime, anong mangyayari sa aming mag-asawa? Remember, before you get married, you should choose. Kasi ilalagay sa marriage contract nyo yan kung ano ang property regime na papasukan ninyo. Now, um, if you did not choose, matik ngayon na, right now, matik na uh, absolute community of property. Ma'am slash sir, nagbago yung isip namin. Gusto namin ipag-separate ang aming properties. Anong gagawin namin? Go to court and uh, uh, ask a petition the court to declare judicial separation of property. 
So, paghihiwalay ng court yung mga properties nyo. Now, uh, obviously, if the court declares judicial separation of property, yung dating magkasama, community property, ipapaghiwalay na. So, again, if uh, separation of property is declared by the court, it is judicial in nature. So, anyway, uh, it will enable husband and wife to sell to one another. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin sa number uh, 2. So, reasons for prohibition, kulang ng S yung aking ano, slide. So, number 1, to prevent a spouse from defrauding his creditors. Siyempre, ako may marami akong utang hinahabol na ako, anong gagawin ko? Ililipat ko sa pangalan ng asawa ko lahat ng mga properties. So, hindi na mahahabol. Bawal yon lalong-lalo na kung ano, um, basta, hindi na mahahabol yan. So, just to um, protect yung mga creditors. So, what else? Um, number two, to avoid a situation where dominant spouse will uh, take uh, advantage of the weaker spouse because obviously in a relationship in a marriage all, uh, there is always a weaker spouse and there is always a dominant spouse so sabi ng dominant spouse kung mahal mo talaga ako bigay mo sa akin tong ganitong property mo ibenta mo sa akin ito etc etc so nauto na yung weaker spouse kawawa naman siya to protect his interest remember hindi pwedeng uh, magbenta yung spouses sa isa't isa except when they fall under the exceptions and what else to avoid indirect violation of prohibi prohibition against donation between spouses. So, yun ang um, ating uh, tandaan dyan. Um, person who are permitted to question the sale here are yung uh, creditors who became creditors after the transaction, uh, uh, before the transaction. Uh, what else? Government can also question validity and legitimacy of sale between husband and wife. Um, 1491 talks about uh, uh, incapacity by reason of relation to property. So anyway, uh, 1491 will enumerate uh, persons who are by law um, incapacitated to um, purchase property. Yan. So they are prohibited from acquiring property either directly or indirectly whether in a public or private sale or judicial action, either in person or through mediation of another. So here, uh, actually, in the examples later on, you will uh, note that because of the relationship of uh, this person with the owner of the property, kaya siya na disqualify doon sa uh, pagbili ng particular property na yan. So, persons uh, disqualified in 1490, 1491 also disqualified from becoming lessees doon sa uh, properties na yon. What else? Uh, na natin. So who are the persons uh, disqualified? Mm, number one, guardians. So guardians with respect to property of the ward. So kung hindi nyo alam yung mga terms na to, bumalik na naman kayo sa hulaan nyo. Bumalik kayo sa obligations and contracts. So, guardians with respect to the property of his ward, hindi niya pwedeng bilhin yung property ng kanyang uh, ward. So, ward is uh, any person who is under the care of a guardian. Maybe a minor, incapacitated person, insane, etc. So, yung guardian na yan, anibawa, baliw ka, meron kang guardian, yung guardian mo, hindi, ka pwedeng, hindi niya pwedeng bilhin yung properties mo. Um, what else? Agents with respect to property whose administration or sale may have been entrusted to them unless the principal consents. So the principal again is the person who authorizes uh, an agent to represent him. So anyway, itong um, principal na to, if he has properties na pinapabenta niya sa agent, hindi pwedeng yung agent mismo ang bumili. Yan. So uh, agent is not allowed to sell to himself or to buy for himself. So, to sell uh, to sell to himself. Kung halimbawa, yung principal binibenta yung property, pinapabenta ng principal yung property niya, yung agent hindi niya pwedeng ibenta sa sarili niya. Uh, also, kung may binibenta yung, um, uh, merong pinapabili yung principal, sabi ng principal, bilin mo yung property na yun. Yung uh, principal na yan, hindi pwedeng, uh, yung agent hindi pwedeng bilin yung um, property na yon, yan, so yun ang 
at tandaan natin dito sa uh, example na to. Of course, the exception is unless the principal uh, consents to yung uh, transaction of the agent. So, here in number 1 and uh, 2, actually kasama din yung number 3, mamaya ako masabihin. So, number 3, executors and administrators. So, with respect to property of the estate under administration. So, yung executor is the person who will... Um, execute or give effect to your last will and testament. So, definitely patay ka na rito. So, uh, siya yung magmamanage ng iyong estate pagka namatay ka. Yung administrator is a uh, person who will also manage your estate. Ang um, pinakaiba lang nito, yung administrator usually court appointed at saka wala kang last will and testament. Yung executor naman is the person you appointed in your last will and testament. So, anyway, um, property na yung estate mo na kanyang ina-administer, hindi niya pwedeng bilhin yung mga properties na yon So, let us say, namatay ka, nag-iwan ka ng sampung lupa, pina-administer mo or pina-manage pina mo dito sa executor mo, bawal niyang bilhin yung, lupa na yun, yung mga lupa na yan. So, yun ang tandaan natin. So, here in number, uh, in letter A, B, and C, the relationship of trust and uh, confidence. Yung uh, nagiging Uh, ano dito, nagiging basis ng prohibition. Kasi syempre, ward, mayroon siyang relationship of trust and confidence with the guardian, also principal and agent, and also yung executor. So, um, yung relationship na yan prevents them from becoming, uh, from buying yung uh, properties ng uh, kanilang mga uh, principal, agent, etc., or yung uh, testator. So, yun ang tandaan natin dito. Uh, to minimize fraud. Kasi nga, uh, madaling magkaroon ng uh, fraud na yan. Kasi may trust and confidence nga. So, baka mamaya niloloko na yung ward. Mamaya niloloko na yung uh, principal, etc. etc. Minimize tem temptations. Prevent fraud. Exercise, uh, prevent uh, exertion of undue and improper uh, influence. So, yun ang tandaan nating uh, reason for disqualifications in case of uh, number one a letter a b and uh, c what else um, d public officers and employees with respect to property of the state or any subdivision thereof or any uh, government owned or controlled corporation or institution the administration of which has been entrusted to them, the, this provision shall also apply to judges and government experts who in any manner whatsoever take part in the sale. So, any public officer or employee who is involved in a property owned by the government, including yung mga GOCCs. So, if they are entrusted with the administration of these properties, hindi sila pwedeng mag sa properties na yan. What else? Uh, letter E. Justices, judges, prosecuting attorneys, clerks of superior and inferior courts, other officers and employees connected with the administration of justice. So this is with respect to property and rights in litigation or levied upon an execution before the court or within whose ju jurisdiction or territory they, ex they exercise their respective functions. This uh, prohibition includes the acts the act of acquiring by assignment. So, any property in litigation, uh, itong property na to involves sa litigation, itong case na to pending kay judge. Si judge, bawal niyang bili niyang lupa na yan. So, si fiscal na siya yung nagpo-prosecute ng, um, um, let us say, accused, tapos merong property involved, bawal din niyang um, bili niyang mga properties na yan. So, they cannot deal with property involved in uh, litigation. So, yun ang tandaan natin. Any others, especially disqualified by uh, law, so refers to those prohibited by reason of fiduciary relationship involves. involves. So, this is so because of the principle of eus dem generis. So, yung eus dem generis sa uh, isang enumeration, yung mga general words like uh, and others, etc. placed at the end will embrace only those situated under the same class of group same class or group of those listed down the enumeration. So, any other specially disqualified by law yung mga kagaya nila. So, anyway, 
Um, ito naman to eh, dinefine naman. So, aliens who are disqualified to purchase private agricultural lands, bawal. So, this is by express prohibition of the constitution. What else? Unpaid seller um, who exercises his um, uh, right of lien or uh, yung kanyang right to st of stoppage in transit to is prohibited uh, from buying the goods directly or indirectly doon sa resale of the uh, goods. So, unpaid seller meaning hindi pa siya nababayaran. Tapos yung uh, goods uh, nandoon na sa papunta na sa buyer or um, nireserve niya yung kanyang right of lien. Tapos, uh, dahil nga hindi siya nababayaran, nabayaran, yung mga goods na dapat mapupunta sa buyer ay ibinenta na lang in a public sale hindi pwedeng bilhin noong unpaid uh, seller. What else? Um, number three, officer conducting execution sale or his deputies cannot become purchaser or be in the inter interested directly or indirectly in any purchase as, at an execution sale. So, yung execution sale, as I have already mentioned in my previous um, lectures, ito yung uh, sale na gagawin if the debtor is um, a judge liable. So, wala nang maipambayad yung debtor, so kukunin yung kanyang mga properties that are not exempt uh, from execution. Tapos yung execution sale, ibig sabihin yan, pagka benta ng mga properties, alam niyo ba yung mga pinaparod sa mga drama ng mga Pinoy, tapos yung mga hinihila yung mga radyo, TV, tapos nagmamakaawa pa sa harap ng bahay, ref, ganyan. Yun yung mga, ano, yun yung mga properties that are sequestered or taken, forfeited by the court, taken by the court, and then they will sell it. Ang tawag sa mga sale na yan, execution sale, to satisfy yung judgment na making the debtor liable. So, anyway, um, with respect to numbers, to le numbers 1, number 2, and number 3, or letter A, B, and C, remember, class, uh, guardians, uh, ano ba yan? guardians, agents, and also executors, administrator, the sale is, remember, voidable. Uh, but with respect to 4 to 6, yung judges, uh, public officers, and any other specially disqualified by law, uh, remember, class, uh, the sale is null and void, void because of public interest. So, number 1 and 3, only uh, voidable. Uh, yun ang tandaan natin sa ating... Um, um, ano ba yan? Yan ang tandaan natin sa chapter 2. Now, I, I have a question class um, which I will answer by myself dahil wala namang ibang sasagot para sa akin. Minsan nakakalimutan ko yung part na yun eh. Uh, how about lawyers class? Are they um, disqualified from buying uh, property? So, prosecuting lawyers obviously is uh, iba yon. But eh, yung mga attorney ninyo na kinuha ninyo para tumulong sa inyo regarding your property so, remember class, um, lawyers actually are prohibited from buying properties yung kanilang uh, clients. Uh, so, sa mga cases, ganyan, yung property ng client, bawal talagang uh, bilhin ng uh, lawyer niya na yan. So, lawyer is not allowed to purchase the property of his client which is in litigation. Um, Pagka binili niya, this is a breach of professional conduct and this is also malpractice. But obviously, um, pwede naman kumuha ng percentage uh, of the value of the properties in litigation that may be awarded to his client. So, property may in-award, kukunin niya yung 10% para sa kanya, pwede naman yun. So, that is called your contingent fee. Yung para sa success fee, parang ganun. Pwede naman yun. So, anyway, uh, that is it for um, chapter 2, capacity to buy uh, or sell. So, anyway, uh, please stand by class for uh, Chapter 2, that is a very short discussion. Uh, thank you and uh, good night class.